everyone has been asking me about bags for years and I've never been much of a bag person. I carry bags, but I don't really look into them much. Fortunately, we have on the channel a uh, resident bag expert, which is Daniela, my wife, who is obsessed with bags. So the question here is, what are your recommendations for designer handbags that aren't from top or very obvious houses? Daniela says, and I agree with most of these, there's a few of them that I'm not as familiar with, but she definitely is. I'm just gonna run down the list that she's prepared for me here. Used Balenciaga City Bags. They're great prices and they're great bags. I have never personally liked City Bags very much. I didn't like them when I was a little kid. I don't much care for them now. I like other bags by Balenciaga. I don't love that one. She's obsessed with them. I would believe her. If it was between the two of us, I would believe her. Bags by Awake Mode are pretty cool. Okay, another thing that she said, completely agree with this one, is crazy that it's not obvious, but Givenchy has great bags. Fully agree. Matthew Williams has actually been knocking it out of the park as far as the women's bags are concerned. The two of us carry this in the medium. I love this thing. It's incredibly practical. It's very neutral. It goes with just about everything. And I've been street styled in this one time, which was kind of cool. A recent acquisition that I cannot believe we got for so, we got this for like $240 and it was like brand new, is the Pandora bag. I have the, the lar large or the medium. It's the large version of the Pandora bag, which is basically enough to be like a medium sized backpack, like a Jansport essentially. This thing rules. I love it. Um, I'm actually getting to break it in at Fashion Week this time. I'm super excited. This is kind of my perma bag. I love this thing. La Mer Croissant bag, strong agree with that. The La Mer Croissant bag is really cool. The Margiela Glam Slam is like our mutual most desired bag. Y Project Accordion bag, that is a really cool bag. Um, she said anything by Rick. The only thing I would say as a qualifier for Rick is that some of them can be kind of delicate. I have a Rick bag, which I absolutely am obsessed with. I fucking love that bag. It's just one of those things where if you have it and you're gonna like really like beat into it, you, you need to understand what, what could happen with that. She also said, lol, Bottega Veneta, Loewe, and Hermes, if you can afford fucking any of it. <laughs> I think the two of us are in the, probably in the majority in the industry in thinking that Bottega Veneta, Loewe, and Hermes are the top as far as leather production is concerned. The best leather comes out of those three companies. The last three here are, are less expensive ones that are not by like big designer brands. Polen, I agree with that. The, the, the problem with like, okay, here's the deal. When you get to smaller brands, they're more focused, and especially Palen is very focused on this, just quality of craftsmanship and quality of leather. I don't think there is really any dispute amongst people who are leather experts, which I am not one of, um, about Palen having high quality craftsmanship and leather. Um, the problem with that, and what a lot of people might be turned off by, is that the brand overall does not have a clear vision or story to it. It's just kind of high quality goods. So if you have a Palen bag, it's like you just you just have a really, really nice, well-made bag, but it's not going to have the kind of like vision that like Jonathan Anderson is casting at Loewe. I personally get very invested in vision making and storytelling and stuff. And so I, it's, it's hard for me to buy into a bag without feeling like I'm kind of like stepping into a world with it. But Polen, strong recommend. There's actually a Polen bag that I kind of want. Yuzefi, and then another one is uh, Dance Lenti. It's another one. Oh, I have just been informed that it is Dance Lent. I am so sorry. <laughs> Dance Lent. Damn, am I 12? Dance Lent. Everyone watching this is like, Bliss, you're a dumb ass. What designer is exciting you the most right now with Paris Fashion Week coming up? That is a great question. So the obvious, like, <laughs> the obvious answer that I think most people could guess is Rick Owens. Rick Owens is exciting to me because it is very consistently good. And it is by far the most like culturally important among my audience. Probably the most culturally important overall is probably Balenciaga. They seem to be the ones who are like culturally moving the needle the most. Like the reason everyone is returning to jeans right now is, I mean, you could attribute it to other things, but I think we're all kidding ourselves if we don't point that back to Balenciaga. Designers that I personally am the most excited about is gonna be Satoshi Kondo at Issey Miyake. Satoshi Kondo is doing a unbelievable job. He is one of the most exciting fashion designers in Paris right now, and no one is talking about it in those terms. Everyone, I think, mostly is saying like, oh, I love Issey Miyake, but like, I, I feel like most of them don't realize that he has passed away and hasn't designed the brand in a few years. Sorry, it got super duper dark. We're gonna wait for the lighting to return. 
Oh, oh, so Toshi Kondo is a big one. Let me just actually like look at my calendar for what we're going to so I can give you a real answer to this. So this is just like absolute top tier, like the stuff that I am the most excited about. Very excited for Junya Watanabe, very excited for Ruohan. Oh, and I really wanna see what Marina Yi is doing. Marina Yi just started making clothes again. She's one of the Antwerp Six. She's the, the most underrated member of the Antwerp Six. And I, I really wanna see what Marina Yi is doing. I am extremely excited about that. I have spent so much of my life Life being ferociously hardline opinionated. As a fashion critic, it does not behoove me to start like running around being like, yo, this person is the best designer of all time. We've done that for fun on the channel a few times, just like for the, the sake of making a fun video. Like I, I do have a who is the best designer currently living video, but generally what I'm trying to do is try to fully do the beginner's mind thing where I'm going into Paris with a totally clean slate, as much of a clean slate as I'm able to do as a person and just take in things on their own terms and just allow myself to be surprised. That is what I'm really, really trying to do when I go to Paris. Oh, easy answer to this one. Do you have a most liked brand or label from a black designer? If so, what brand? Easy, Aziz Awokaniron of Ego, spelled I-G-O. The Instagram handle is this. Aziz is an actually independent, truly small brand that does just unbelievably innovative work. I love what Aziz does. Um, as, as per most very small fashion brands, the output is slow and you can't expect them to be doing like huge runway shows or anything. But this, this is a company that is being run by someone who has not only a vision, but is that, um, you, you gotta be you gotta be a little bit crazy to do a fashion brand and Aziz is crazy in the right ways but he's uh, he's a smart dude and I feel like he's gonna take the brand really far I'm I'm super super happy with that brand oh okay we got to get really real with everybody here for a second I love fashion but I'm appalled by most fashion people is it gonna get better okay here we go I am I am not being sarcastic and I am not in any way attempting to dunk on you but no it will not get better if you are spending a bunch of your emotional energy thinking about the way that other people are behaving that is a route that will only lead to unhappiness it will emotionally exhaust you and it will make it where you are not as available to give love to the people in your life that you prioritize. Not trying to be like overly abstract or self-helpy there, but um, I, I spent a lot of time in my life just sort of like spinning my wheels, just like being like, why are so many people so stupid? And why are other people, why they have such bad taste? And why, why don't people get it? And why don't people prioritize the right things? And why, why isn't everybody just checking in with me before they make decisions? This will never work. You'll just stay mad forever. I haven't fully been able to let go of all of those feelings. Like some of them still exist, like probably not even all that deep in my mind. I bet if you asked my wife, she'd be like, no, there's some of them that are still kind of up on the surface. Please try to let that go. You'll, you won't ever get anything out of it. I'm pretty sure I've been asked this before, but I really want to answer it again. What is the craziest textile that you've ever seen up close? No contest. One time. I went to a secondhand luxury store and they happened to have a Birkin that was in crocodile leather. I just looked it up. It's made of crocodile porosis, which is the, the type of tanning that they do for the bag. Feeling it, it felt like tire rubber almost. It was honestly unbelievable. It was black. It was in the largest size that they make, which is what size? Thank you, Birkin 45, just absolutely massive. And you could really get like your whole hand. I don't know why they let me touch it without gloves on. It was kind of crazy. They were like, this isn't the Hermes store like here, but it felt like tire rubber. Like it felt like you could run it over with a truck and it would be okay. It was, it was so unexpected in the way that it felt. It felt like, I mean, like it felt like a bulletproof vest kind of like military gear kind of. It was absolutely crazy. I loved the tactile experience of getting to touch that thing. And boy, if I owned it, I would, like I would take it to bed with me in like a cuddly way, calm down. We make reference to this all the time. We're gonna reiterate here all in one spot. How to start a brand, serious question. I'm willing to do anything. Step number one, get a job as a designer at an existing fashion brand. Stay there for seven to 10 years. That is the first step to the whole thing. Whether you go to fashion school or don't go to fashion school, you need to go to a fashion brand. Here's where this gets a little bit difficult. If to that, you are saying, but Bliss, there are no good fashion brands where I live. 
you need to move to where there are fashion brands that you can work for. Nothing, absolutely nothing will get done in your fashion career if you stay where there is no fashion happening. The second thing that you might be saying to that is, oh, but Bliss, I can't get hired at a fashion company. If that is the case, then you need to be asking yourself why you are not being hired as a designer. That could be because of some political or luck, bad luck reasons, but please do not pass up the opportunity to learn what holes are missing in your skill set. Um, if, if you're not getting a job just because you should learn CAD and maybe if you just spent a few months learning CAD, you could be qualified in CAD enough to get a job. It would suck if you just sort of waved everything off and just said like, it's impossible to find a job. Everyone doesn't like me. As much as you can, try to self-examine and see if there is some way that you can improve yourself and be more qualified for the position. The third thing is that, oh, Oh, I don't have the money to be able to move to a big city and be able to get a job here. If that is true, and that's totally fine, you absolutely do not have the funds to start a fashion brand. I am not saying that to be discouraging in any way. I am saying that because I want you eventually to be able to have a fashion brand. Do not dump a bunch of money into producing clothes if you cannot already afford to move to New York and get a job at Marc Jacobs. If all of those things are out of your reach right now, make your own clothes. Don't post them to Instagram. Don't, don't tell other people about it. You don't have to tell other people about it. Just make your own clothes. Just keep making clothes. Find inspiration from fashion things. Learn how to draft patterns. Make a suit for your dad. Those are the things that you should be focusing on if you are not able to go get a job at a firm. Just a reminder, the person that asked that question said, I'm literally willing to do anything. So there you go. What is your favorite runway of all time? This is a great question that is basically impossible for me to answer. I have kind of let go of the mega hardline opinionated part of my life that I was kind of trapped in up until I was about 30 years old. Um, I now am much more like, well, it kind of depends. Like, what do we mean by favorite? Like, I, sometimes like my favorite is this and other days my favorite is this. I have different favorites for different reasons, but probably the most as like Bliss Foster, the fashion channel is Margiela Spring Summer 1990. That was the one where it was on the playground where the, the kids kind of like got involved in stuff, the, the totally unplanned thing with the kids. Other big favorites of mine are um, Rick Owens' Babble. That was the second runway analysis I ever did on the channel. And it has what I, I think, if I just say it off the top of my head, this is my favorite runway look of all time. I love the Mountain Witch Parka. I love this look. This is incredible. It's, it's unbelievable. And it, it went to stores like that. That went to stores. It was available at the Rick Owens store in Soho, New York. What else? What else? My favorite runway show that I have ever attended in person is Junya Watanabe uh, Fall Winter 23 Women's Wear, Ready to Wear. I went on and on and on about that runway show in the Paris Fashion Week coverage that we did from that time. That was the uh, the one that was 90 minutes long. If you want to watch it, you can go check it out. I, I said in that review, this is the best fashion show that I've ever attended. That was an incredibly good show. Hood by Air Spring Summer 2015, excellent show. I, I returned back to that one a lot when I was kind of early on in my obsession with fashion. That was one of the first runway shows that I looked at over and over and over again and really like made me think a lot. Or I was like, man, something's going on here, but I didn't quite have the interpretive tools to be able to fully unpack it yet. Comme de Garçon Fall 2016 is a runway show that I return back to whenever we're talking about Ray's work on the channel, I almost always use this runway show as the example to sort of talk about it because I somehow just have decided in my subconscious that this sort of encapsulates like abstract runway expressionism so perfectly. Um, I just really like how the looks in this runway show look, especially this one. I just love this look and I, I still don't understand why. And I love that I don't understand why. That's really cool to me. Okay, we're gonna check in with Daniela now and she's gonna say what her favorite ones are. Um, I don't think, I mean, unless you want to. This, this does not seem like something you would wanna do with every question, but I'm kinda gonna make you do it for this one. Name, just name three. And as per usual, she does not want the microphone and will definitely kick back if I try to like give it to her. So she's saying Fall 95 Couture by Mugler. Yeah? Okay, so the one with the robot, like super iconic show. And I, I think you've said before that you really like this one because it is just like a perfect example of camp. Yeah. What else? Um, oh yeah, okay. Comb Fall 2012 because the 2D uh, runway look here is her fa favorite runway look of all time. Yeah, okay, cool. Maybe not the absolute favorite, but she references this one all the time when making a point about abstract clothing design. And Margiela Fall 99 because of the huge duvet coat 
the, the like really crazy thing. Yeah, mega iconic. And like an incredible idea for like the found object idea in clothing. You, at, you I think you wrote that Margiela episode. You did write that Margiela episode. Crazy. I, did I edit that one? Or you, you, were, you were editing that one too. That whole episode, that whole episode, folks, from the Margiela series was brought to you by Daniela. That's it. I love you all a bunch. Bye.